Hello everybody. Hi. How are you doing today? It's now November the 29th. It's about 3 p.m. Central Standard Time here in Manitoba, Canada. And welcome and thank you for joining me for the Beginner to Intermediate Technical Analysis, where we will focus on a wide range of technical analysis from every perspective that I usually do, except for Elliott Wave, because a later video will be released on an Elliott Wave technical analysis that's more so designed for advanced traders and advanced analysts in general. So guys, right now we are going through a lot. And it's a very critical time in my opinion. And um, just so you guys know as well, right, I do teach a course number two that shows a lot about my personal trading style with Elliott Wave, with lots of examples, and I think it's um, one of the better courses out there. And I know that you guys know already, but the people that are still interested in the course, you guys gotta reach out to me. In 2020, these courses will not be purchasable at all. I want to be clear about that, okay? I'm removing them from Udemy, and the people that have access to it already on Udemy will always have access to it. I want to create scarcity. I don't think everybody should have access to my material, for example, because I'm actually starting to value it a lot more. Not only that, I want you guys to feel like you have something that not a lot of people do have. And if you're interested in it, reach out to me. Right now, this is the deal. All three courses for 180 American. It's a blow sale and I'll tell you why in a minute. If you guys are interested in courses one and three or two and three, that's going for 120 American. The reason I'm doing this right now to blow it out is because in 2020, I'm actually starting it already. Courses one and two are all going to be revamped, updated, revised with a little bit of a nicer, first of all, setting and everything will be conveyed in a more condensed, clear, and concise manner. And I think that it's only going to benefit you guys, the people that have access to my course right now already, that have purchased it before 2020, you guys are all going to get this updated automatically on Udemy, and the people that have an offline copy, just reach out to me, and you guys will get a hard copy of it as well. But in terms of being able to buy it in 2020, it's not gonna happen guys so now's the time if you're interested reach out to me you definitely ran out of all coupon codes already you guys will not be able to buy this at a normal price if you guys tried because you system completely changed and it sucks that's all that i can say so anyways let's get into this guys so today we're gonna cover a very wide range of topics first one will be macd and histogram okay the macd refers to the moving average convergence divergence indicator it has two lines in it one is a slow moving line and the second is a fast moving line the first one is going to move at 12 and the second one the slower one will move at 26. it also includes an indicator on here that oscillates up and down which gauges instantaneous and real-time uh, momentum does that make sense their lagging indicators, such as these ones, where they're based off of moving averages because they require a sample from a previous set of data in order for us to formulate these averages. Whereas the histogram is an instantaneous excuse me, instantaneous, it's hard to say that, gauge that shows us in real time the oscillation of the momentum that we're seeing the swings in the market for. So my formula is this, and I'll show you guys many proofs in the pudding very soon. First of all, we'll draw the slow moving line just like that, okay? As an example. Now my formula for a drop has always been the same. One, look for a crossover to the upside, don't mind the squiggly lines. Two, look for one downside, okay? Actually, actually I'm just going to do it like this, it's a little bit better, watch. Look for one coming down, then look for one coming up. If it actually ends up crossing over again, that is where you should be extremely interested in it, right here. The reason why you say you're interested in it is because you say to yourself, if it crosses over one more time, that I know one of two things. One, to GTFO, get the F out of my long position and two maybe it's time to enter a short make sense so if this actually happens we're going to look for crossover coming to the downside 
This is the most important crossover right here. I call it the third one, right? That's the first one. That's the second one right there. And this one right here is the third one. Okay? This third one right here is very indicative of a drop. If you ever see the second one happening, be scared, but not fearful to the point where you make rash decisions. Always factor in these things that are happening to add to your confluent reasons of what's going on. So right now, if I were to make an Excel spreadsheet, which I have for you guys, and then the next one will be weekly. You guys can easily follow this. Today, okay, today, daily, 12H, and then we're just gonna skip down to 4H after that, four hours, okay? Reason why we're doing this is because we're gonna take a look at the monthly, whoops, like this, okay, we're gonna go through every indicator, MACD, RSI, we're gonna go to also price action, all right? So we're gonna evaluate all of these things right here so we can get a good gauge, right, of what's going on in the market right now. So let me just highlight this for you guys. Uh, I don't really know how to use this that well for, for this one at least. I'm looking for the color. Hmm. There you go. Let's go to the background color and let's call that red. So now we got one red. Okay. And now we're going to go here and say that, you know what, this is obviously the setup for drop on the monthly. And we have to acknowledge that because if this does get to the negative side, Perhaps December might get a small tick. Like we might recover entirely and just launch straight upwards, but we don't know. Therefore, it's always in our best interest as a trader to look for signs that may lean us one way more towards the other. And right now, unfortunately, based off, based off of just a monthly, if I was an investor of some sort, which I'm not, this would be a really good sign for me to be like, a little bit fearful, right? So on monthly right now, looks decent. Our side, we can't really get a gauge of it too well right now. There's nothing, there's not enough information. So now, let's go. See this crossover that's about to happen? Doesn't have to happen. We might even bounce back up this December. So let's be very, very cautious. Our side, we wrote down as not applicable. Actually, I'm gonna say neutral. Neutral is probably a better statement, a way to describe it. Okay, and then you look at price action as well on, on the monthly. We say to ourselves, what do you guys think of it? It's a pretty neutral as well. Series of descending price action, of course. You know, this is a bullishly spinning top right there. This one here could be a hammer, but it's got to push back up to 8300 ranges for the month. And we only got two days ago. It's not gonna happen. So price action is looking neutral, bearish, in my opinion, actually. Okay, that's how I would classify that. So I'm more so comparing bearishness and bullishness on this little Excel sheet of mine. Now let's go to the weekly. If I go to the weekly, this is looking, let's say, you know, MACD is looking very bearish. And the reason why we say this is very bearish is because of that section right there. The bulls attempted to make a break to the upside, but now they're... <laughs> Sorry about that, I was checking my phone right now. I got my dad's um, 70th dinner, 70th birthday dinner party tonight in about four hours. I thought it was actually tomorrow. They changed the date and they didn't actually tell me. Or they thought that they did, but they forgot to. It's a really big event. It's going to be a lot of people there. So a little bit nervous to go. And the worst part is my date was planned for tomorrow, right? But, you know, it's supposed to be tonight. And my friends are not that available at short notice sometimes because of family obligations ready for the holidays. So now I'm scrambling to get a date. Um, of course, a very respectable one that my parents have known for a long time, etc. So, um... That's why I was checking my phone. Sorry for that, okay? So we say that this is bearish right here because it's true, right? We take a look at all these indicators and we say that the curvature here tried to break to the upside, but it simply could not. 
break to the upside. In fact, we got rejected. We were all for the bulls, right? Price is going up. Everything is looking phenomenal. But we can clearly see that whoa, whoa, whoa. we were bouncing, okay? One week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. Five weeks, we found some amazing support. And anybody in the right mind would have easily said that right here, this particular section looks great. It leveled up, bam, jumped to the upside. Based on that right there, when it jumped to the upside, it was this candle right here, okay? And because this candle right there was very bullish, and it showed tremendous support at the 55 EMA with the bullish pin bar, well, the histogram is also peaking to the upside. But all I'm saying is that it switched really quickly from bearishness to bullishness, right? Or sorry, from bullishness to bearishness. And um, that's exactly what it exemplified. That it doesn't matter if you're very bullish. It can easily be shut down. And that's exactly what the bears did right here. So when we take a look at the MACD, how can we not say that we're bearish, right, on the weekly? Again, okay, makes sense. And then we can even add another one here called EMA. Okay, on the monthly EMA is um, neutral, right? On the monthly requires, yeah, like on the on the weekly, we're just gonna say the 55 EMA. That's pretty neutral right now. And um, on the weekly, it's it's actually also it's it's bearish. Okay. Actually, I want to take a look at the monthly again. The EMA, 55 EMA, it's still bullish, right? Sure, it's still bullish. I guess if you just say that. Of course we're bullish long term, guys, still. Right? But the 55 EMA on the weekly is bearish. And why do we say that? Because it's below the 55 EMA. Simple as that. Okay? Now we look at the RSI. And the RSI is actually... It's very consistently and constantly moving to the downside. I could not tell you much about it quite yet, you know? So, right now it's consistently neutral. We don't know anything. Our side is saying this, lower lows and lower highs each time, which to me is pretty neutral because it's not showing massive signs of bearish divergence or bullish divergence in any way right now whatsoever. So therefore, I have to say that it's neutral for the RSI. Price action, neutral as well, right? Price action, uh, there's nothing spectacular about this candle. Let's say neutral. Let's go to the 3-day now. So I go to the 3-day chart, and I'm going to look at the MACD first of all. On the 3-day chart, it actually looks bullish on the MACD. Okay? Because right now, if you take a look at this specific section, and let's say I drew this red, right? Like that. And then I drew another one, the green. So there's the first crossover. There's the second one. I'm waiting for a third. That's the long opportunity. Okay? That's exactly where we are right now. First crossover, first crossover, second crossover, second crossover. Where the heck is the third one? So it's actually setting up for a rally right now in the three day, which is kind of interesting. Very, very interesting. But I would still say more so neutral because it's not really high above the MACD line, or this axis right here, okay? Hmm. Yeah, this is interesting. This is called the x-axis, right? x goes from left to right, y goes from up to down, right? So on the x-axis right now, actually, sorry, I should be referring to the y-axis that goes up and down, right? Negative to positive. So now, when you think about this right here, you can say to yourself that it's not that low and it's not that high. You want it to be really low, really low, really high, really high, if you want those massive plays. 
So right now, it's more so leaning towards, I would say on the three day, the MACD is more so leaning towards um, neutral bullish. Yeah, neutral bullish. All right, let's check out the RSI. Very, very, very steady. Could have tripled bottom actually. It's looking pretty bullish, I have to admit. Yeah, the RSI triple bottom. It's actually look, looking pretty bullish on a short time frame. Interesting, isn't it? Triple bottom. Just showing you guys how I take notes sometimes as well. I don't really do this for the public often because I don't think it's necessary, but clearly it is. And then we take a look at, for example, the price action. It's actually pretty bearish, or sorry, pretty bullish. Got a hammer candle. Decent so far. We're trying to fight to get back up above the 55 or the 200 EMA. Price action, I'd say, okay, if I had to decide, I'd say more so neutral because there's no strong conviction of a massive candle yet. 55 EMA is bearish. Um, it's actually bearish neutral. Okay, that's where I would stand on that. On the two day, let's keep going down. Might have triple bottom here again, right? So same thing. And on the two day, it's actually looking very bullish. Okay, on the two days, looking huge, bu hugely bullish because we get that one crossover go to the upside, and then we get a crossover to the downside right here. Okay, and now we're waiting for that other crossover to the upside on the two day. So on the MACD, it's actually looking bullish. Oh, let me go to the three day again. Yeah, but I still have the same argument, right? Where it's not that low, away from the the actual line, the, the axis, I mean, it needs to be higher or lower. RSI, same thing, triple bottom pretty much. It's bullish, the triple bottom for now. Price action, um, Yowzers is, well, here's a bullish pin bar with another bullish pin bar. It's a pretty tough one right now. I'd probably see neutral anyways. Actually, actually neutral, yeah. The 55 EMA. We're saying that we're very, very bearish. On the three day here, this was sandwiched right in between there. But on the two day, we're below the 55 and the 200 EMA. So how can we even say we're slightly bullish? We can't. Let me take a look at the daily. Ouch. Horrible. The MACD, right, is about, it's actually very bullish on the MACD right now, okay? Hugely bullish. If this actually ends up crossing over or getting to the positive side, we'll actually see a very nice rally. Our size is very bullish on the daily. The MACD and histogram is very bullish as well. Price action is very bullish as well. On the daily looks very bullish, except for the moving average, because we got that death cross there, okay? So now on the daily, we're looking bullish. RSI, bullish. Price action, bullish. 55 EMA, um, death cross. Bearish. Okay, so let's highlight these guys green, of course. That's an ugly green color, isn't it? Let's get something a little bit darker. Okay, there you go. So now we're gonna take this bearish one here. And the ones in the middle, we don't really care about too much right now. Neutral, neutral bullish. It's more like leaning, right? I don't wanna I don't wanna nitpick. So right now we're comparing one, two, three, four over multiple time frames though. We're seeing bearishness on the day on the monthly, on the weekly, and on and on the, the the two day as well and i'm sure we'll if i change my mind we, we would have seen it on the three day so everything on the higher time frame we're seeing is bearish agreed but everything on a lower time frame right now is bullish which means there could be a temporary relief rally coming up very very soon so we got to be very patient and look for this okay so you see the macd about to cross over here okay you see the r size is higher lows it's, it's on a rampage right now it's like on a terror to go up Okay, it's looking really good. And you know what, that, that's fine. We have actually a lot of things to, yeah, the, this, this death cross. You know, let's skip the 12 hour 
And let's go to um let's go to something even lower. Let's go to something like this. Um, let's go to the 4 hour now to, to, to take a look at a very very awesome time frame. And this right here is actually looking amazing. The fanning strategy is about to happen here. So in a 4 hour time frame we can clearly see that this is bullish. A 12 hour time frame just as an example is still fairly bearish. So on the 4 hour let's just go here for example for fun. Wow, uh, you know, MACD is crossing over the positive side. It's looking very strong. Our side is gaining a lot of higher lows and higher highs. It's inching up there. It's moving at a very steady pace. So bullish on MACD. Bullish on our side. Price action, damn right it's bullish right now. Looks like we're shooting right now for about 8,100, exactly as I mentioned, okay? And um, yeah, it's bullish all across the board, actually. Everything is bullish about it right now. It's trending above the 55 EMA. Okay, on the, I think the 6 hour is probably where it cuts off. Now the 10 hour is the one where we, we're bullish on everything below the 55, below the 6 hour time frame. Okay, so if you actually think about it, right, this is how we get a gauge. Right now we can easily conclude and have a consensus that Bitcoin's bearish, guys. Simple as that. It's friggin' bearish right now on the monthly, the weekly, the two day. And I just proved it here by putting out a lot of these different different um, reasonings for it, right? But the daily is pretty bullish, okay? The four hour is very bullish as well, up to the six hour, which means that if we can cascade from a lower time frame such as a four hour into the daily, the daily could cascade to a bullish, um, in general, a bullish bias in general on higher time frames. So that's what we want, right? Just remember this little thing. It always gets bullish, you know, whatever happens, it always happens on a one minute time frame first, right? Does that make sense? It happens on a one minute time frame first, always, okay? And then it happens on every other time frame above that, okay? Just keep in mind that there's, you know, 60 seconds in a minute, for example, right? Or 60 minutes in an hour. 60 one minute candles have to occur for a one hour candle to build. Make sense? So if you're seeing it on lower time frames, such as a daily or the four hour, let's hope that it cascades over to a higher time frame. This way we can have a general overall trend that's on a larger degree. So right now, I can conclusively say that I'm very bullish on the daily and the four hour. For now, okay, don't I'm not saying to buy in or anything, don't even take it the wrong way. You guys like I'm not the kind of financial advisor that you think um that you think that I may be or may not be, okay? So Bitcoin right now is just on a tear. Okay, I don't know if this is a leading first wave diagonal or not. If it is, amazing. Okay, let me explain to you the leading first wave diagonal perspective from a non Elliott wave perspective, okay? So this is, I'm sorry, I started grinning because I just saw my bear in the background there. Do you guys see this right here? This gigantic bear in the background? It actually has a name now. I've named it. <laughs> I'll leave that inside joke just for me, my friend. For my friend and I. <laughs> so now we're looking to see if we can actually break any key resistances above the two hour time frame. And it's actually looking pretty cool right now. So you guys have my thoughts, okay, of, of um of what's going on right now. I also want to talk about this right here. Was it not obvious that this right here was gonna be a resistance of some sort? Like, come on guys. Was that not obvious? If you guys did not... Okay, first of all, let's back up, man. You guys, check this out. Can you guys see this resistance? Just tell me you can see this resistance. If you can't see it, there might be something wrong. Let's check it out. I'm not saying there's something wrong with you. I'm just saying that maybe we just need to... um. To focus on just seeing things a little bit better, right? So let's talk about this resistance. Looking for my arrow. I literally can't find it. There we go. So right there, that's where it was established first. Second time it tried to hammer at it, failed miserably. Third time it tried to hammer at it, failed again. But guess what? Bulls don't give up, just like how bears don't either. Cause you know what? 
Sometimes bull don't care, sometimes bear don't care. Just how it goes. So anyways, we finally hammered at it. One, like basically, we'll call this the first. One, two, three. And then we shoot to the upside, right? And then once it shoots to the upside, beautiful. That was the break. I even gave you guys the RR. Now that we know, or we knew that 7400-ish was a resistance, how the heck were we able to easily identify where the next resistance was? Easy, guys. The interim. It basically means previous, okay? So here, can you guys easily see this? Look, okay? Look, look, right here. Right here. Right here. Resistance. Or that was a support. So what was previously a support is a resistance. Don't forget about things like this, guys. So, um... I'm sorry, it was just my parents had seen what time I'm available today. So, um, yeah, so once that turns into um, a resistance here, or support, it turns into a resistance eventually, right? And then you can clearly see right here that we found the resistance many times. And then, like I mentioned, the fifth time that we broke it on the two hour was when we actually shot through it. So now that we've, we've done this, right, we beat it. We don't care about it anymore. Who cares about it? Where's this X, right? Did we beat it? Did we break it? Did we get above it? Heck yeah, bam, okay? So now we just broke above it entirely. Kudos to you, right? You know what I'm saying? Simple as that. There, we broke above it, right here in particular. Just putting a big green check mark there, right? Or not even that big, but like, you know, you know what I mean? Just generally speaking, All right, and here we broke above it as well. Now, where the next, where is the next point of questioning? Okay, when when you look through the next valid point of where we can be finding resistance, will be easy. It'll be right here. Just draw the next mode of resistance that you see. And you see it right here, exactly where I am. And we can easily identify it by pointing it out. One, two, three, four. Four times it was found as, as a support, right? So if it found support four times, if we break below it, what happens to the support? Yeah, it turns into a resistance, right? Like how if a resistance is broken and we come back down, what is that resistance now considered? Definitely considered a support. So because we know that, hey, we just broke past this one right there. Great, right? And there as well, that we could easily say that, well, this the green, the green ones down here eventually turns into a red one up here, right? Does this make sense? Because the green support that you see, right, right there, because it bounced off of it, see the support is green. But on the other end, right, if we actually broke below it, which we did break below the green as support, well, now in my mind, I see it as red. This is red because it just turns into a resistance now, right? That's kind of how my mind works. So I see this right here as next area of resistance. So that's why we hit 7,933, 8K on other exchanges, I'm sure. But that's the, how we actually were able to derive that this was going to be a very, very valid and relevant support or resistance point, okay? So now we're in a major zone. If we break above here, there's a lot of congestion. And I'm talking a lot of congestion. I'm talking all the way around here, okay? Like this whole region is going to be a pain in the butt and I'm personally thinking that it's gonna to relate to some sort of Fibonacci number okay so the way that I'm seeing this if I were to clear it all out is that if we have reached the resistance already where this is you know I, I was gonna get into Elliott wave but I shouldn't 
my apologies. Okay, so if I just do Fibonacci extension, I can clearly see that the area right here, take a look, okay? This is the 0 0.5 Fib, that's a 0 0.382. So the way that you take it is, you guys gotta remember, you take it from where it began to where it ended. Where is the top? The top is right there. Where is the bottom? Right here. So we, we're going top to bottom because we want to know how much more it's going to go up. But if it's the other way around, where we go bottom to top, we want to know how much it's going to retrace down. So so the reason why, I'm, that's a lot of people, be, be surprised at how many people don't know how to use Fibonacci properly. So I just thought I'd give a little quick crash lesson there. So now you can easily see that the 0 0.5, okay, 0 0.5 to 382 Fib region, right here. Right there is going to be a major area of, of contention. Right down to over here, actually. This is bringing it all the way down to be fair. So now what we're seeing is that we can't just say, oh, it's going to hit 8K, it's going to hit 82, it's going to hit 85. We've got to acknowledge this whole resistance zone. And I'm sorry to say, but if you didn't get in, it's probably too late already. And that's not financial advice. This is the strict rule of FOMO. If you felt that you should have got it earlier and you didn't, you are too late. Remember what I'm saying to you guys, okay? Honestly, remember what I'm saying. It's funny. If there's ever this sensation that you feel like you're missing out and you should have got in earlier, you should have got in earlier and you are actually too late and you did miss out. Okay, that's the most basic rule in my opinion. I'll say it one more time. If you have FOMO, definitely don't enter a trade. That's all I can say. Your FOMO is going to is gonna liquidate you one day and I speak from experience man I speak from experience of driving in a car and seeing the market spike to something rushing home dropping anything I'm doing in the summer just driving home rushing home because I got this massive FOMO sensation of needing to be in the trade and then when I get home I realize hey this is FOMO and I'm actually you know what like I shouldn't be in this trade right so right now, what we're seeing is a possible break up to 8,500 at most, guys. That's really conservative. But I'll be darned if we even get to 8,100. So my final resistance right now for this day, intraday, and the trading range will be $8,100 at most. And now, on the bear side, okay, this is the trading range today for me. The trading range for me today is between 8100 at most and on the low side about 7400 I know that might seem it varies a lot for $700 difference but this is kind of the zone that I'm definitely going to acknowledge the reason why I'm choosing this zone is because we might get an ending fifth wave diagonal oops my mistake I said I wouldn't talk about Elliott wave here right so on the high side we can get up to 382 fib structure which coincides with pretty much this whole region but that'll be pretty rare to even get there. I think 7,900 maybe at most. Okay. Yeah, 7,900 or something like that. And then after that, I think um, <clears throat> I think um, on the low side, if we break down, of course, you know, this particular resistance. If I go to two-hour chart, it was pretty strong, right around 7,400, 73, 75. And then if we break to the lower side, we will find support most likely first at 7,400. So what are we going to do about this to see what kind of position we can take? Or what am I going to do? First of all, I'm going to see the reaction, okay? I'm already in from 70, uh, 6950. You guys know that already, right? I got in a pretty pretty stupid price, guys. I'm not kidding. Like, it was just... I thought it was pretty easy to nail it, put it that way. So yeah, we can go over another video of how to enter. Actually, I already did a few times. So right now, I'm waiting to see if it's going to hit a little bit higher for me to take profit. Right now, as it stands, we're not really peaking. We're not really. We're setting up for a failure. Put it that way, okay? We're setting up for a drop right now because it's meeting that histogram, NACD kind of thing of mine, right? The rule. But we don't know exactly if that's going to happen. So, right now, as it stands, guys, on the higher end, it could get up to 8,100. I doubt it. I think we'll be fighting between 79 to 8,000 for a while, for you know a few days at least, or whatever. And if we break to the downside, I think 7,400 will be the lowest we'll see. So I'm waiting to see now if we're going to get a test. 
at 7400. If we do get a test at it, great. What I'm going to do personally myself is probably take some profit of the house right now. Okay, I'm going to take 50% of my profit probably soon. And the reason why I am, this is not financial advice, okay? I don't want you guys to ever friggin' sue me for the dumbest shit. And I'm saying that right now. If you take this as financial advice in any way, you probably shouldn't be on my YouTube channel. You probably shouldn't be trading in general. If you're literally sitting on YouTube and watching a random dude try to tell you what to do with your own money, that you don't even know him. You may as well just give me all your money for free if you're gonna trust a stranger with your money. It just makes no sense. When I was younger, I never trusted anybody with, you know, like their financial decisions or anything. You just gotta trust yourself, right? So just don't hold me accountable in any way. My advice is only what, I, it's not even advice, it's just what I am doing in my position. Just to be very clear, I've had a lot of people try to threaten me or people who have said things to me such as, this is your fault, I've lost money. I used to feel bad at first, and then now I just laugh at myself because these people are too silly to not understand that you just simply don't trust random people with your money online. You may as well just rip it or burn it or something like that, right? This makes no sense. So anyways, all I'm saying that what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the house money right now, profit, 50% of it, and then I want to see if it actually breaks out to 7400 And if we find support, great. I will add more. I just took 50% of the house money and I can add more to my position. But if we fall through it, that's fine. At least I took the majority, 50% of my profit higher up, say it's 7,800, and then I took it again, 74, 50, 50, 78, 74, average price is 7,600. From 69.50, that's still $750 of profit. Or sorry, six, um, $650 of profit, which is huge. Uh, so in my opinion, it's a good idea. And then if it breaks above, you know, if it breaks above 7,900, then that's fine. Took some profit 78, minimized my risk, got a chance to reevaluate re my position in a lot of detail. I've dollar costed average, you know, you can call, actually I shouldn't say dollar costed average. I've laddered accordingly to manage my risk where I can allocate it accordingly, depending on if I wanna, if I wanna, um, you know, hold or shed some stuff as well, right? So I can manage my risk easily. And every time you take some of the profit, your risk significantly changes, right? And the, you know, people talk about risk in many ways. They talk about it in a number, risk to reward, and they just talk about generally speaking, risk, right? And it's usually associated with some sort of ratio as well. But generally speaking, if you are to take some of your house profit, you're reducing your risk, risk in general, okay? Because then you can evaluate it once again. And that's kind of cool to be able to do that. Your stop losses changes accordingly, your entry point is drastically changed as well. So yeah, so once again, guys, high side, 8,100. If we break above 79, sure, maybe I'll consider adding to it. If we break below 74, I'm gonna sell it, but I'm gonna take the majority of my profits now. This stuff can be argued all day, and it usually comes down to um, um, tolerance, your own tolerance of what you can take and what R unit you want to assign. So anyways, guys, I have done a really detailed technical analysis, I realize, and I'm not even close to done, but it's time for me to wrap up this video. So have yourselves a great night, and I'll see you guys very soon. If there's time to do the Elliott Wave technical analysis today, I'll do it. But it's my dad's 70th birthday once again. It's it's actually like um, sometime on the weekend, but we're celebrating it today. And um, yeah, so I hope you guys thoroughly enjoyed this video, and I'll see you once again. Guys, if you're interested in my course, now's the time to get it. It's a Christmas special. It won't be available in 2020 anymore. Those who have access to it now will always have access to it permanently on Udemy. Okay? But those that don't have access, I'm sorry. December 31st, 2019 will be the last day that you guys can have access to my course or purchase it. So right now, it's going for 180 American by crypto because Udemy sucks and they don't allow you to print off more coupons and they force you to do the dumbest things with their coupons now. They're going to lose a lot of customers and they don't even realize it. What they're doing is to protect themselves at the Forge flash sales. Excuse me, flash sales. Not a fan of their system. I don't believe in it whatsoever. They're the definition of capitalism in a really shitty way that does not listen to customers whatsoever and only innovates based on how it would protect them. I'm not a fan of that. It's going off of Udemy. If you guys are interested in it by 180, for 180, it's by crypto. You guys will all get a hard copy to download 
for free. This way you can have a permanent copy of it. All the courses. If you want only courses 1 and 3 or 2 and 3, it's 120 American for both of them. And you guys will get a voucher or sorry, download right away to get it, okay? And and then after that, guys, in 2020, I'm already working on um, a revamped, re-edited, updated, revised version of the courses 1 and 2. A little bit of a nicer setting, not that that matters, but the content will be clear and concise and to the point, maybe even shorter, maybe with a better way of explaining things. Lots of new examples because we now have a year or two of data. So we can talk a lot more about different things going on and I'm actually very excited to do that. So anyways, I look forward to seeing a lot of you guys enroll in it while you still can. If not, tough luck. Scarcity, guys. It's just like Bitcoin, right? It's all about supply and demand. It's all about scarcity. Nothing is infinite. Everything is finite and the things that are finite, I hope that we actually value it. So anyways, have yourselves a great day and take care. Bye now.